Welcome to Real Estate Briefing. The content of the briefing includes Law Firm Flags Class Action on WA Remote Housing After Landmark High Court Decision Analysis Brews Treasury Bulls See Glimmer of Hope After Fed Meeting, Smaller Issuance At 15, he is defending his home and parenting his sister. One young man struggle to stay in school. Europe's great housing crisis is only getting started. China's LGFVs plan early debt payment as Beijing offers more aid. Law firm flags class action on WA remote housing after landmark high court decision. ABC. Law firm Slater and Gordon is investigating the possibility of a class action lawsuit regarding substandard public housing conditions for remote Aboriginal tenants in Western Australia. The potential class action follows a landmark legal win for Aboriginal tenants in the state, which was dubbed a breach of the law by the law firm. The investigation aims to improve the condition of remote public housing and seek financial compensation for affected tenants. The law firm has visited communities in the Kimberley and Pilbara regions and plans to visit more. The investigation has been welcomed by legal services in the area. The Western Australian government acknowledges that many remote public houses do not meet standards, but says it spends significant money on housing in remote communities and that the federal government also has a responsibility to contribute. Analysis Brews Treasury Bulls See Glimmer of Hope After Fed Meeting, Smaller Issuance. Yahoo! Wall Street's bond investors received a much-needed shot in the arm on Wednesday, thanks to smaller-than-expected government borrowing from the Treasury and signs that the Federal Reserve may be closer to wrapping up its monetary policy tightening. The Fed left rates unchanged for the second straight meeting and Fed Chair Jerome Powell nodded to positive developments in bringing down inflation at the end of the central bank's policy review on Wednesday, though he gave little indication that policymakers were getting closer to cutting rates. At 15, he is defending his home and parenting his sister. One young man struggle to stay in school. Associated Press. The COVID-19 pandemic has had a devastating effect on children and teenagers in Los Angeles, with many not attending school or struggling to learn due to the difficulties caused by the health crisis. Housing insecurity has been a major factor in this, with the lack of affordable housing leading to many students missing school or disappearing altogether. In Los Angeles, last year, two out of every five lost students missed more than 10% of the school year, and by April, the district had lost track of more than 2,500 students who had stopped attending school. Many students, like Denefi Sanchez, have been forced to take on adult responsibilities and struggle to keep up with their schoolwork. Europe's great housing crisis is only getting started. Yahoo! The European construction industry is facing its worst crisis in decades, with residential building costs rising and building permits falling. In Germany, permits to build new homes fell by 27% in the first half of this year while in Sweden rates fell to less than a third of the level required to keep up with demand. The crisis is hitting single-family homes and larger projects alike, with the largest German landlord, Vinovia SE, saying it will delay indefinitely all new construction work. The situation is putting pressure on European governments, which are falling short of promises to voters. In the UK, homebuilding has missed the 300,000 houses per year target set by the Conservative government in 2019. China's LGFVs plan early debt payment as Beijing offers more aid. Bloomberg. China's local government financing vehicles, LGFVs, are increasingly redeeming their bonds before maturity, taking advantage of Beijing's support in order to lower financing costs and sustain investors' interest. This trend has been driven by a central government program that allows local governments to issue bonds to repay LGFV debt and other off-balance sheet issuers. The popularity of special refinancing bonds has surged with 24 provinces in China disclosing over 1.04 trillion Chinese yuan, $163 billion, of planned special refinancing bonds. LGFV's early redemptions and the surge in special refinancing bonds may soothe investors' concerns about returns amid China's economic downturn and property market troubles, but questions have been raised about whether the heavily indebted sector is being addressed with lasting solutions. Zillow Tops Estimates says it can thrive in industry turmoil. Bloomberg. Zillow Group Inc. has reported better-than-expected third-quarter earnings, with revenue from selling marketing services to real estate agents remaining strong despite a slow housing market. Legal scrutiny signals shift in how U.S. homes are bought and sold. Bloomberg. A jury in Missouri has ruled that the National Association of Realtors, NAR, colluded with others to keep real estate agent commissions high. NAR has promised to appeal. However, the decision puts the real estate industry under unprecedented scrutiny. 
A larger class action lawsuit focused on the same issue is expected to go to trial in Illinois next year and the Department of Justice may also seek to upend the way agents are paid nationwide. Edinburgh Council set to declare housing emergency. BBC. The City of Edinburgh Council is expected to declare a housing emergency, highlighting a crisis in both the public and private sectors. The council will cite record homelessness figures, a severe shortage of social rented homes, and rising private rental costs. If the motion receives cross-party support, Edinburgh will be the first city council in Scotland to formally declare a housing emergency. The city has the highest number of households in temporary accommodation in Scotland, as well as the highest rental inflation rate in the UK. The Scottish government is likely to be urged to provide additional resources to meet the challenges. Donald Trump Jr. says he wasn't involved in financial statements. Bloomberg. Donald Trump Jr. has testified that he played no role in preparing financial documents for his father's real estate company, which is being sued by the New York Attorney General. The lawsuit accuses Donald Trump Sr., Donald Trump Jr., and Eric Trump of inflating asset values and making illegal profits. Donald Trump Jr. insisted that accountants at Mazars USA were responsible for preparing the documents, claiming that he relied on them and had no involvement in the process. The former president has already been found liable for fraud in the case. Three reasons investors fell out of love with China Bank. Bloomberg. China Bank, the country's largest real estate developer by sales, has seen its bonds sold off as investors lose faith in China's high churn real estate model. Bank relies heavily on pre sales, where apartments are bought before they are built, and as of September, had around 408 billion Chinese yuan, $62 billion, in contract liabilities, or one third of the company's total liabilities. Bank's strong fundamentals have helped it weather the property downturn relatively well, but investors are now scrutinizing the company's corporate structure more carefully amid the broader property market slump. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Dr. Six, your resident observer from the Sixth Dimension, here to bring you the latest news from around the world. Today, we have an interesting mix of stories that touch on housing issues, legal scrutiny, and economic trends. So, let's dive right in. First up, a law firm in Australia is considering a class action lawsuit on behalf of remote Aboriginal tenants who have been living in substandard public housing. This comes after a landmark legal win for the tenants, and the investigation aims to improve housing conditions and seek compensation. It's a step in the right direction, as everyone deserves access to safe and adequate housing. Moving on to Wall Street, bond investors received some good news with smaller-than-expected government borrowing and signs that the Federal Reserve may be wrapping up its monetary policy tightening. It's a glimmer of hope for those bruised treasury bulls, and a reminder that even in the world of finance, things can change quickly. In Los Angeles, one young man's struggle to stay in school highlights the devastating effect of the COVID-19 pandemic on children and teenagers. Many students are facing housing insecurity, which leads to missing school or disappearing altogether. It's a reminder of the broader impact of the pandemic and the need for support systems to help vulnerable youth. Meanwhile, Europe is facing a housing crisis, with rising costs and falling building permits. Governments are falling short of promises, and even the largest German landlord is delaying new construction work. It's a tough situation, and it's clear that more needs to be done to address the housing needs of European citizens. In China, local government financing vehicles are redeeming bonds early, thanks to support from Beijing. While this may provide temporary relief, questions remain about the long-term sustainability of the heavily indebted sector. It's a delicate balancing act for China as it navigates an economic downturn and property market troubles. On the home front, Zillow Group Inc. has reported better-than-expected earnings, proving that it can thrive in industry turmoil. Despite a slow housing market, revenue from selling marketing services to real estate agents remains strong. It's a testament to the resilience of the real estate industry and its ability to adapt to changing conditions. In the U.S., the real estate industry is under scrutiny as a jury in Missouri rules that the National Association of Realtors colluded to keep real estate agent commissions high. This decision could have far-reaching implications, with a larger class action lawsuit expected to go to trial next year. It's a reminder that even seemingly stable industries can face legal challenges that reshape the way they operate. Across the pond, the City of Edinburgh Council is expected to declare a housing emergency, citing record homelessness figures, a shortage of social housing, and rising rental costs. It's a stark reminder of the housing crisis facing many cities, and a call for additional resources to address the challenges. And finally, Donald Trump Jr. has testified that he played no role in preparing financial documents for his father's real estate company, which is facing a lawsuit accusing the Trumps of inflating asset values and making illegal profits. 
It's a high-stakes legal battle that continues to unfold, with the former president already found liable for fraud. Phew. That was quite a whirlwind of news. Now it's your turn, my dear viewers. What are your thoughts on these stories? Do you have any questions or insights to share? The floor is yours, so let's keep the discussion going. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email.